It's no secret that Step 2 CK will become the most important step exam. And 10 to 20% of that exam will be ob topics. One of the most high yield ob question types are about risk factors. So if you want to score extra points to honor your shelf and get your goal score on Step 2 CK, be sure to watch this video until the end. What is the greatest risk factor for pelvic septic thrombophlebitis? A history of postpartum endometritis. So we have to suspect pelvic septic thrombophlebitis in someone with a fever that is unresponsive to antibiotics. Along with any of these risk factors such as a history of endometritis as well as pelvic inflammatory disease, a history of c-section or pelvic surgery. Oral contraceptive pills increase the risk of which cancer? Cervical cancer. So let's say that you have a question stem where they have a patient and she has all these different risk factors. She's using OCPs, she has multiple sexual partners, and a previous history of an STI. So they would have this case and they would ask you, which of the following would be the greatest risk factor for her developing cervical cancer? If you see HPV there in the answer choice, then that is the answer because HPV infection is the greatest risk factor for cervical cancer. Even though OCPs are a risk factor of cervical cancer, the examiners like to kind of trip you up by asking the greatest risk factor or the number one risk factor. What are risk factors for ectopic pregnancy? A previous history of ectopic pregnancy, previous pelvic or tubal surgery, and a history of pelvic inflammatory disease. What is the greatest risk factor for a retroperitoneal hematoma? And that is uterine artery injury during C-section. What are risk factors for postpartum hemorrhage? The greatest risk factor for PPH is uterine atony. So for uterine atony, the most common causes include uterine overdistension, such as fetal macrosomia, polyhydramnias, and multiples. Other causes of uterine atony include a prolonged labor and chorioamnionitis. So let's get back to the other risk factors for PPH. Those are retained products of conception, genital tract laceration, and an inherited coagulopathy. What are risk factors for gestational diabetes? Obesity, excessive weight gain during pregnancy, and a family or personal history of gestational diabetes. What condition is a patient with gestational diabetes at risk of developing after giving birth? And that is diabetes. That's why patients who have gestational diabetes are screened with a two hour 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test at six to 12 weeks postpartum. Since I just brought up postpartum screening, I also want to mention two high yield facts for that screening. Fact number one is that we have to screen for intimate partner violence during the postpartum period. Fact number two is that we must also screen for depression because of course we have postpartum blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. If you want to see a very high yield review of these three disorders, be sure to check the description for that video in the section below. And if you are liking this high yield review, please be sure to pour up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another high yield video. What are risk factors for a placental abruption? Well, the most common or the greatest risk factor is hypertension. Other risk factors include drug use, maternal trauma, and prior placental abruption. What is the greatest risk factor for vaginal hematoma? An operative vaginal delivery.
What is the greatest risk factor for cervical cancer? HPV infection. Remember that the most common oncological strains of HPV that causes cervical cancer are HPV 16 and 18. Other risk factors for cervical cancer include smoking, as well as history of sexual transmitted infections, early onset of sexual activity, multiple or high risk sexual partners, and immunosuppression. And like we mentioned earlier in this video, another risk factor is oral contraceptive use. What is the most important risk factor for postpartum depression? A history of depression. What is the greatest risk factor for uterine inversion? A prior history of uterine inversion. What is the greatest risk factor for fetal tachycardia? maternal fever. What is the greatest risk factor for endometriosis? A family history of endometriosis. What is the most important prognostic factor for endometrial cancer? The stage at diagnosis. So this is an extremely high yield point and this extends across all specialties. If a patient presents and they have cancer and the question stem asks, what's the most important prognostic factor? It's probably always going to be the stage at diagnosis. That's very high yield and something you definitely don't want to forget. What is the most common risk factor for squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva and vagina? HPV. What is the most important risk factor for clear cell carcinoma? Maternal exposure in utero to DES. What is the greatest risk factor for uterine rupture? Prior uterine surgery. And this can include a C-section or a myomectomy. Other risk factors include induction of labor or prolonged labor, as well as congenital uterine anomalies and fetal macrosomia. So let's say that we have a patient that presents with severe abdominal pain and physical examination reveals palpable fetal parts and a loss of fetal station. We must have a very, very high clinical suspicion of uterine rupture in these patients. This is extremely high yield. What are risk factors for ovarian torsion? An ovarian mass, a young woman of reproductive age, and ovulation induction. So if a woman is undergoing fertility treatment and then the question mentions that she has a sudden onset severe unilateral abdominal pain, we have to suspect ovarian torsion. What are risk factors for a hydatidiform mole? A previous history of this condition, as well as extremes of age. What are risk factors for PPROM? Prior PPROM, GU or genitourinary infections, and polyhydramnios and antepartum hemorrhage. So if you know these risk factors well, then you know that this is why if a pregnant woman has an asymptomatic bacteriuria, you have to treat them with antibiotics regardless because it can increase the risk of PPROM. What are risk factors for stress urinary incontinence? Pregnancy, especially multiple pregnancies, and obesity. What are risk factors for hyperemesis gravidarum? Multifetal gestation, hydatidiform mole, and a history of hyperemesis gravidarum. What are risk factors for congenital toxoplasmosis? Consumption of undercooked meat, unwashed produce, and unprotected handling of cat feces. What are risk factors for preterm labor? Prior spontaneous preterm delivery, a history of cervical surgery, and a short cervical length on transvaginal ultrasound.
as well as multiple gestation. So what is the greatest risk factors for chorioamnonitis? Prolonged rupture of membranes, PPROM, and prolonged labor. What is the greatest risk factor for preeclampsia? And honestly, that is somewhat of a tie between nulliparity and prior preeclampsia. So let's just hope that the examiners are kind on exam day and don't have both in a question stem as answer choices. Other risk factors include advanced maternal age and a pre-existing medical condition such as diabetes or hypertension. It's very high yield to note that patients at risk of preeclampsia are started on low-dose aspirin prophylaxis for preeclampsia prevention. What is the greatest risk factor for magnesium toxicity? Renal insufficiency. This is because magnesium is renally cleared. So if a patient presents with an elevated serum creatinine, they may require a lower dose and very close observation for magnesium toxicity. Remember that hyporeflexia is the first sign of magnesium toxicity. And in order to manage these patients, we have to first stop the magnesium, of course, and give them IV calcium gluconate to reverse neuromuscular paralysis and to prevent cardiac arrest. What is the greatest risk factor for endometritis? C-section. So if you want to see a very high yield review comparing the key distinguishing factors between chorioamnonitis and endometritis, be sure to check the description. What are risk factors for the arrest of the second stage of labor? Maternal obesity, excessive weight gain, and diabetes mellitus. So remember that the second stage arrest of labor is a lack of fetal descent after more than four hours of pushing in a prima gravida with an epidural or more than three hours of pushing in a prima gravida without an epidural. If the patient isn't a first time mom and they are pushing for more than three hours with an epidural or more than two hours without it, then we would classify all those different circumstances as an arrest at the second stage of labor. What are risk factors for pelvic organ prolapse? Multiparity, obesity, and postmenopausal age. What are risk factors for shoulder dystocia? maternal obesity, fetal macrosomia, and gestational diabetes, as well as excessive weight gain. What is the greatest risk factor for endometrial cancer? Unopposed estrogen exposure. If you liked this quick high yield ob review, please be sure to pull up that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video.